Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com and I'm here today with the Roland Micro Composer MC8 which is a early sequencer from Roland. This preceded the MC4. The MC8 is a very large and very full featured sequencer and apparently there weren't very many of them made. Uh, I'm told around 200 of them were made. So uh, this is definitely something that we don't see every day, so I thought I'd uh, show my viewers a peek inside. This particular MC8 is having some issues. Uh, when we turn it on, it either uh, boots into an error mode, so the uh, display is flashing, uh, or this time it boots up, but it won't take the uh, the time base and tempo parameters it flashes an error there and then sometimes when it boots up it just boots up into garbage I'll see if I can reproduce that for you so here I just turned it on and the displays are just filled with random data uh, so this guy is sick and he needs a little bit of help uh, but it's gonna be a challenge because there's no schematic available anywhere that the that I can find um, for this thing and the, the owner of this device is very knowledgeable about the MC8 and its history and, and even he hasn't been able to come up with a schematic for it. So we're going to wing it and also base our investigations a little bit on the MC4 service notes which are published by Roland and available on the internet. So let's open this up and have a look. So here's what we've got inside and unfortunately it doesn't look like the service notes for the MC4. It looks pretty different. So we've got a power supply here, uh, we've got a CPU board here, we've got this board here which uh, bridges the CPU and the switch matrix and, and displays. So obviously this is some kind of uh, driver for the displays and, and processor for the, the switch matrix for the keypad on the front. And there's one board here behind the displays uh, which according to the manual is called the timer display board. And that's pretty much it. Underneath this is the uh, transformer. So let's take a closer look at each of the boards. So here's the power supply and I can see there's five uh, voltage regulators here. Uh, each one of them is marked with a part number that's a fixed voltage regulator. So this UA7915 is a minus 15 volt regulator. Uh, there's 7905. 7815 is a positive 15 volt regulator. There's a 7812 and a 7805. So there's a lot of different power rails here because uh, most likely the RAM that this thing uses is a really primitive RAM that uses actually three different voltages besides ground. It uses like a three volt, uh, sorry, a five volt, a 12 volt, and a minus five volts. So that's why there's all these uh, voltage regulators. But kind of the way they're laid out, we can kind of see these black wires are going to be ground. Um, this pair of blue wires is coming from this 7915. So we can check the, the voltages for each of these rails. So we, we know to look for five voltage rails and, uh, and what color wire they should be on. Back here we can see some computer grade capacitors, those large CAN capacitors with screw terminals. Looks like there's there's one here that you can see, but then right behind it there's an even bigger one. Uh, these are the filter capacitors for the power supply, and uh, they appear to be original. Here's a CPU board, and it uses really, really old school chips. You can see this 8080 processor is like a white ceramic uh, chip with gold leads. It's really, really vintage stuff. And then there's uh, 20 chips here which have little stickers numbering them 0 to 19. So the little stickers are probably covering a window um, on an erasable ROM probably. So these are probably the ROM chips. And then these ceramic chips here, um, uh, I'll check the part numbers, but these are probably going to be the RAM chips. Uh, and then there's a few other TTL logic chips, some trimmers down here, but not much else. And then here's this little board, which we think to be the uh, switch matrix and or display driver. 
which comes up here. This is the back of the uh, LED displays. Uh, and then these are the bottoms of the, the uh, buttons, the switches. And there's a pot there for, for adjusting the tempo. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to verify all of the power rails. So we have five fixed voltage regulators and I should verify all five of them are working okay. So I'm going to put my lead here on the ground side and then run down the line. First one is that minus 15 volt regulator. We're at minus 15.03 which is good. Next one was a 7905 which is a minus 5 volt and that's good. The next one is the plus 15 volt and that's uh, that's acceptable. Um, it's not on the nose but with these fixed regulators you can't always get them on the nose. Next one was the 12 volts, so 11.95 which is fine. And uh, last we have the 5 volts which is 5.013. So we are getting all of the correct voltages coming out of the power supply. So since we confirm that power supply is okay, it looks like power distribution is not going to be an issue either because these wires are soldered to the power supply board and then soldered to each of the boards that, that use them. So power distribution is not going to be an issue. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and reseat all the connectors. Uh, sometimes connectors can be an issue and uh, we'll see if that makes any progress. So the connectors were actually gold plated uh, so they and they look to be in really good condition. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to just probe uh, some of the key IC chips. So we have the, the CPU here, the ROMs, and the RAM up here. And I'm going to probe it with the oscilloscope because this particular set of chips uses three different uh, supplies. It uses a 12 volt, a 5 volt, and a negative 5 volt. If it were a regular CPU that uses 0 uh, you know, and 5 volt, a single 5 volt supply, I could get away with this device, which is um, a lot easier to use than the oscilloscope. This is a logic probe, so I would connect this to my power supply ground and this to my power supply 5 volt. And then I could go probe around and it would beep and tell me whether things are high or pulsing or, or whatnot. Uh, but I'm going to use the oscilloscope because there's different supplies here. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to just verify that I see activity on the data bus, that I see the clock, um, all the different supplies. And when I probe, I'm going to touch the pin of the IC, not the pin of the socket. Because I want to make sure that, um, that, uh, that the connection is actually good. A lot of times these old IC sockets can fail. So for example, we'll start here with the CPU. So this is the address bus, uh, pin A10. There's nothing really happening there. Uh, we've got the ground, the data bus. So here's a few pins of data bus type stuff and there's, there's activity occurring on the data bus. So it looks like things are alive. And running down, I think we're gonna get to the negative five volt supply soon. Yep, so there's the negative 5 volt supply. Here's an important one, the reset line on a CPU. Uh, this 8080 processor, the reset is um, non-inverting. Normally it's, it's inverted, so you need to have a high reset for the CPU to be running. But on the 8080, it's uh, low, so um, th this actually is, is correct. Uh, and I'm just going to keep running down. This is our... Uh, clock, my frequency counter on the oscilloscope says 2 megahertz, so everything is looking pretty good. I'll uh, continue down this and then I'll take a sampling of the ROM chips and we'll go from there. So the CPU and the ROMs checked out okay and then I moved on to the RAM and I mentioned I was expecting to see 4116 RAM chips here which are obsolete and archaic chips um, that are used by the MC4 and listed in their schematic. They're also commonly used in, or were commonly used in, in early 80s arcade games. And they use three supply voltages, 12 volts, 5 volts, and negative 5 volts, which is the same as the 8080 CPU here. Um, but what I actually found was an even more obsolete 
an archaic chip. It's called a UPD410. And uh, I couldn't even find a data sheet for this RAM chip. It's that obsolete. But I did find a schematic for some computer peripheral that used that chip. So from that I can see that there's uh, 12 bits of a address and one data bit coming out of that. So now I can probe this and see if there's signs of life on those chips. So as I was working my way around, uh, I came to this board, and again I'm checking kind of the main chips on each board to see if they're, you know, receiving and uh, stuff on their data lines and 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 outputting what they're supposed to be. And this chip kind of caught my eye. This is an Intel uh, 8253, which is a programmable interval timer, and uh, so basically you feed it. Uh, some cl some timing information on a data bus and it spits out a clock and when I got to probing it um, there was no clock coming out of it uh, unfortunately I can't show you that since I, I pressed the chip and now it seems to be working so since we have a problem with a chip in an IC socket the solution is to replace the socket not just push the chip back in and uh, hope the problem goes away because if you do that it's gonna the problem is gonna come back so I've kind of folded that board back and there's some rework there but fortunately the chip that we're changing is here so well that we're changing the socket of not changing the chip so with the chip out I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but there's a huge amount of oxidation on the pins of this chip so I'm gonna clean it up with a fiberglass scratch brush and change the socket as well. And here's the socket that I've removed and I, you can see in the, the right two most pins there's all kinds of uh, crud in there that uh, definitely did not help make a good connection for this chip. Here's the Intel chip with the pins cleaned and you have to clean both the outside of the legs and the inside of the legs because it's going to make contact on both sides and you're going to want that to be clean. The pins got a little bent when I pulled it from the socket since it was kind of corroded into place, uh, but I straightened them out well enough that I can get it back into the new socket. So now that I've changed the socket and cleaned up the chip, it's reliably turning on every time I turn it on. And we're going to load up a sequence through the uh, audio jack on the back, which takes a computer data file. It sounds like an old uh, computer modem. So we're going to load in a sequence through that. And then once I've loaded it in, I can hit start and it's going to run through at the proper tempo before when he loaded from the file, it was kind of going at a snail's pace. So hopefully you found this to be an interesting peek inside this very rare sequencer, the Micro Composer MC8 from Roland. And I hope you'll join me by subscribing to my other videos so you can see inside other rare and interesting synthesizers. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.